What is Bang Bang? It has nothing to do with popcorn or loud gunshot noises, but everything to do with turbochargers. In a recent video, I talked about turbochargers. And how do you address turbo lag? Today, we'll talk about anti-lag and how it minimizes turbo lag time. So hop in and let's go for a ride. People who like turbochargers love the boost it gives their engine. Large turbos give you high top end power, but one downside is that they're much more laggy, meaning there's a delay before you achieve full throttle and boost in torque. The reason is because the larger the turbine wheel, the greater the rotational inertia, which means more time is needed to spin its wheel. Let's say you're rally racing or drifting. You let off the gas for a moment, the turbine slows down, so then you press the gas, but you don't get immediate boost. You need to gas again and again or do something else to get the turbine back to working speed. But you're losing time, and why? Because the moment you squeeze the clutch to change gear, you remove your foot off the accelerator. This means that the throttle valve at this moment closes the intake system, and the fuel-air mixture loses its richness in oxygen. Less oxygen, so less force of explosion in the cylinder, which means less torque. Hence, the slowdown in speed. And when you press the gas again, it's like the turbine is saying, wait a minute, let me think about it. But you want immediate response to the pressed pedal, without any delays or hesitation. And while yours is still thinking, a competing car with an explosive bang passes by you, and that's because of his anti-lag system, which minimizes his turbo lag time, so that he can press his gas and get immediate boost. The anti-lag system, or ALS, requires an air bypass and ignites a mixture of air and fuel in the exhaust manifold or turbine housing, and not in the engine cylinders. That's the secret sauce behind ALS. Okay, now, wait a minute. To understand ALS, we need to briefly rewind and recall how a conventional turbocharged engine works. So the fuel-air mixture explodes when the piston is close to its maximum top dead center. Thanks to this, we get the most efficient combustion of fuel, and the engine produces the greatest power. When, during the exhaust stroke, the piston ejects the burnt mixture from the cylinder through the exhaust valve, it passes through the turbine wheel and therefore spins it. The turbine wheel, in turn, transfers inertia to the compressor, which forces pressurized air into the combustion chambers of the cylinders. The intercooler also helps to further compress the air before it enters the cylinders. It cools the ambient air before feeding it to the engine. This allows even more air to be fed into the cylinder in one cycle because chilled air is more dense and takes up less space. The result is that a more powerful explosion happens in the combustion chamber of the cylinder. More boom, which means more power. But this is only as long as the driver is pressing the gas. As soon as he lets off the gas, the throttle valve slams shut like a door, and as a result, the turbine doesn't get fed and loses spinning speed. To avoid turbo lag, you need a way for the turbine to not lose its spinning speed. One method to achieve this is to cause an explosion directly in the outlet manifold right in front of the turbine. This type of anti-lag system is called throttle bypass or throttle kick. This is how it works. When you let off the gas, sensors transmit information to the Engine Electronic Control Unit, or ECU. As a result, the anti-lag system shifts the ignition angle towards the delay by 40 degrees or more. Then the injection control system changes the composition of the fuel-air mixture, enriching in it with oxygen. At the same time, the throttle valve is constantly kept open by 30%. When the piston already drops down to the bottom dead center, then the spark plug ignition delay is triggered and the exhaust stroke begins. This re-enriched mixture has not yet burned out completely, so all this mixture ready to explode is pushed through the valve into the exhaust manifold. There, on contact with the hot pipes of the exhaust manifold, the remaining fuel explodes. Naturally, combustion continues in the cylinder, so the engine doesn't stall. The main volume burns out already in the release. As a result, these explosions maintain high pressure and accelerate the turbine's rotation, even when the throttle valve is nearly closed. In other words, no slowdown in turbine at low engine speeds, and therefore, no need to try to get the turbine back up to a higher speed. And now, when you press the gas again, the fuel ignition advance angle returns to the desired parameters and your car doesn't experience turbo lag. Immediate acceleration. 
Anti-lag systems were first used in the early days of turbocharged cars in Formula One racing, around the mid to late 1980s, until fuel restrictions made its use unusable. It later became common in rally cars due to the increased turbo lag from the mandatory restrictor at the intake manifold. Anyway, all this would be all very good if it weren't so bad, because there's one problem. Since our fuel burns practically in the outlet, all this heats up to incredible temperatures. The additional emissions and even higher temperatures places a heavy load on the entire exhaust manifold and the turbine. In fact, it's so damaging that racing cars in the World Rally Championship typically need to replace their turbos after every single race. And that's not cheap. How'd you like to have to change yours after every time you drove the car? Actually, the system isn't very reliable either. But if you want to win the race, then why not? What about ALS in a regular passenger car? How many miles do you think the turbo can handle? Maybe a thousand miles? Nope, too many zeros. Maybe a hundred? Still too much. After all, with an ALS, the temperature of the turbine wheel can reach 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why we see ALS usually in race or performance cars and why production vehicles with turbocharged engines don't come pre-packaged with ALS. Another type of ALS is the secondary air injection or inlet bypass. You see this often in rally cars like WRC vehicles. In essence, it uses a throttle bypass, which looks like this. A special bypass valve is placed directly in front of the throttle valve, which directs air from the compressor through the intercooler directly into the exhaust manifold, bypassing the engine. The wastegate valve is solenoid controlled so it accurately controls airflow, while the ECU delivers the correct fuel mixture. All this will be done by the control unit, depending on the conditions that you need to enable anti-lag. That is, now the turbine will blow into itself through the exhaust manifold. Sounds like a great idea, right? With this system, when you let off the gas, the throttle valve closes, but the fuel-air mixture remains enriched by the bypass valve. So the ignition timing is no longer rolled back so much because we provide a certain amount of air to the manifold past the engine. And it continues working while the enriched mixture burns out the exhaust manifold and spins the turbine. Of course, it will be hot there again, but not as hot as the first type of ALS because fresh air enters the exhaust manifold bypassing the engine engine, and so it is not as hot. Also, we don't overheat the engine much because we don't roll back the ignition angle much and the mixture doesn't get enriched as much. So in principle, this setup is much cooler. And that's how this ALS works in many modern racing cars. The turbine blows into itself. Today, modern race cars have special systems that control the various aggressiveness settings in the anti-lag system. This allows the driver to select the appropriate throttle response based on conditions and terrain. In general, they can be divided into two groups, soft and aggressive. The ones used in Toyota and Mitsubishi race cars are quieter compared to those used in Ford and Subaru cars, which have high noise levels and aggressiveness. Okay, so now you're a bit familiar with ALS. So when you see two cars racing simultaneously shooting from the exhaust pipe with flame and roar, you might think, here it is, anti-lag, but don't jump to conclusions. Maybe it's the two-stage rev limiter working. How's that? The engine needs a rev limiter to prevent damage to engine components from overspeeding. This system limits the maximum RPM that an engine crankshaft can reach to reduce damage and failure. The explosions of diesel engines can be especially appealing. Heavy pistons can break the connecting rods, pierce through the engine, demolish the cylinder head, or punch the engine block with fragments of the connecting rod. That's why the limiter stops the rotational speed from going beyond what the engine can physically withstand. This limitation or cutoff consists of two different maximum rotation limits. The first is usually below the red line of the tachometer. Basically, it's the launch control, which is the launch procedure. Its operating principle is based on the car engine's ability to maintain torque when a throttle is open and the clutch is squeezed to the maximum. At this moment of ignition, when the engine reaches a large number of revolutions, the driver stops holding the clutch pedal and the launch control button. This lifts the speed limit and instantly increases torque. Therefore, the first RPM limit is set to ensure optimum 
grip at the start. The second one is located at the edge of the red field and it's just so that the engine doesn't run out of gear. So when you add gas and approach one of the two rev limiters, the car begins a safety procedure, like turning off the fuel or closing the throttle. Since the computer also controls the ignition delay of the mixture, like the anti-lag, where does the unburned fuel from the cylinders go? That's right, into the exhaust manifold, directly into the turbine, and that's how you get the bang bang, the pop and exhaust flames. Throttle control and anti-lag might appear similar, but they're two separate systems and it can sometimes confuse people. If you enjoyed this episode, please like the video. Thank you.